Hello everyone. I miss you. I love you. Um, I wanted to share a couple words of you to, with you today. Um, this message is about the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Um, and that being said, I wanted to uh, share with you the definition of good. Um, it says the definition of good is that which is morally right. Morally right. Righteousness. Um, so that brings me into a couple of questions that I want to add to ask you. Do you believe in an afterlife? Do you see the world as mostly good or evil? What do you find your purpose in? How many more years to life are you guaranteed? How often do you read the Bible? If God is our eternal creator, does it make sense that man is accountable to him? And last but not least, do you consider yourself to be a good person? A morally right and righteous person? Um, and so a few questions to think about. Now I want to dive into what is the gospel? And the gospel is, since God is holy and just, first of all, who is Jesus? Since God is holy and just, he has to punish sin. He who is fully God became fully human in the person of Jesus Christ to take punishment that we deserve. We broke God's law. We're criminals in God's eyes who deserve hell, so we are not considered good or righteous to God. Why did Jesus have to die such a shameful, bloody death on the cross? Um, to take upon himself your rebellion, guilt, and sin, and to give or credit to you, the sinner, his righteous life and the benefits thereof. So it was a legal transaction. Jesus paid his righteous life in order that we may be righteous to God. We may be under God's promises again under the blood of Jesus. Um, God can legally dismiss his case against you based on your fine or debt having been paid by another. Jesus paid our fine um, our sentence of death um, and uh, for all who rely on works of the law trying to be good enough to earn God's favor are under a curse that's in Galatians 3.10 um, that refers to thinking you're in right standing with God by just doing good works so think back to the questions I asked in the beginning um, two things God requires of us to be forgiven and to be restored in right standing with him that fall under that umbrella um, repenting and trust repenting is changing how you how you thought of him and his sacrifice for you turn your mind and heart away from sin or yourself and back to God trust in him alone and in what he did on the cross to save you so like for example if you're on a on a plane your, your plane is about to crash they announced mayday mayday um, we're about to crash. Everybody hold on. What are you going to do? You're going to grab. You just, you see a parachute. You're going to grab on to that parachute. And you're not just going to grab it. You're going to put it on as fast as you can. And you're going to cling on to it for dear life. Waiting for that moment to jump. Um, and so that's what he means by trusting in Jesus. It means you, you grab on to Jesus for dear life. Um, no matter what situation you go through, happy or bad, happy or sad, um, grab onto Jesus and he will lead you through. Like you, God will walk you through once you cling on to Jesus. Um, and so I wanted to share with you in Acts chapter 10, 39. It says, we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, the cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be, caused him to be seen, Easter. He was not seen by all the people, but by the witnesses whom God had already chosen. This was when Jesus was seen after his death, when he rose. Um, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us, whoops. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And that is again Acts 10, 39. Through 43 and this was Peter uh, Peter 
the apostle Peter speaking. Um, so he right there ran through the gospel that um, Jesus died for us, um, for us to be saved, for our salvation. And so that comes back to my first question of, do you believe in an afterlife? Do you, what do you think you're going when you die? I know a lot of this coronavirus is, um, has instilled in us the fear of death, fear of our loved ones getting sick. And so what the gospel is that good news that we don't have to live in fear of death. Death has been defeated. That's what that means. Death has been defeated by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, and yes so god knows we're just we're human he knows that he knows we're not perfect but he knows it says in uh, psalm 94 11 the lord knows the thoughts of man he knows that they are futile futile means incapable of producing any useful result pointless he knows by ourselves on our own selfish ways we're pointless we get nowhere we it leads us to death um, and so like, yeah, he, he knows us. He's created us. We are made in his image. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, but he knows our thoughts. He knows our thoughts. And when we choose to walk down the wide path that leads to death, and he knows when we choose to, to follow in his narrow path that leads to heaven, the gates of heaven. Um, so I want you guys to think about it. If you have any questions, let me know. I know this is a little longer video. Um, I just want this to be shared. Like it, it Peter says it back in, in what I just read. Um, God appoint, excuse me, God, God appointed Jesus as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Um, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed. So we are, that is what you hear of when we say, when you hear of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is to go and tell, go and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And don't be afraid because it says, I don't know how many times in this Bible, do not be afraid for I am with you. And so just to fully trust in those words, trust in your Bible, read it, um, and live an active life of faith alone in Christ alone. So let me know your thoughts. I love you. Um, and yeah. <laughs>